Many countries in the world is going to face with this kind of what you call it a choice, whether they see it as a challenge or they see it as an opportunity. And many developing countries is seeing it as a challenge. Why? Because when they see the technology change, for example, in the manufacturing sector, automatization, robot, and using artificial intelligence, or even in the financial sector, like financial uh, inclusion, fintechs, the many developing countries has no preparation for policymakers to define their policy first, and second, how they are going to respond in terms of preparing their, their human capital, that is uh, people, education, health, as well as in building infrastructure in order for them to be able to take benefit of all this technology. Now, as the largest economy in Southeast Asia, how has Indonesia harnessed this new technology and how are you seeing it impacting growth? We definitely have both the opportunity, but at the same time, a challenge. The challenge first is actually lack of infra infrastructure. You cannot tap and use the technology unless the infra infrastructure has been built, whether this is related to the road connectivity, power sector, electricity, as well as in this case, the penetration and the accessibility of the internet up to the remote area. We are, I'm not talking about Jakarta or Java Island, but more than 100 island in, in 100,000 island in Indonesia. So how those people who still live in a remote area will have the same accessibility? So first challenge on uh, accessibility and infrastructure. The second one is on a quality of human capital. Indonesia, I think side by side, if you have our neighbor, Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, who actually have a much more advanced in using technology. For us, we can learn from it without actually feel that you are always constantly like behind. We even can leapfrog by learning from many other countries who is much more advanced from us. And that's why the president of Indonesia now asking us to learn how to adopt and change the curriculum. We are more focused on vocational training in order for us to be able to provide more human capital, especially young demography in Indonesia, to be able to participate in the economic activity through this technology. We also use the technology in order for us to be able to monitor service delivery. For example, we change the program for the poor, which is used to be paying them by cash now into a cashless and providing them with what you call it financial inclusion program at the same time. Well, as the policy maker on this commission, how are you handling that struggle to balance regulation with the rate of growth uh, in new technology? Oftentimes, the government finds itself at loggerheads with the private sector. Well, uh, many of the policy makers is actually still in the learning process. Even in this case, when we were in, uh, in a G20 meeting among the finance minister and central bank governor, we actually watch and see this technology, and we wonder how this, what kind of response, policy response. So this kind of engagement, which is coming from many different background, will allow and give the opportunity for the policy maker to learn and to understand and to hear it from the first hand private sector on what they see as an opportunity and what kind of policy and regulatory reform that need to be done by any country in the world.